to go. In the late 90s to mid-2000s, Real Madrid embarked on a jaw-dropping era that would change football. Despite a staggering billion-dollar investment, controversy shrouded their legacy. Join us as we unravel the highs, the lows, and why this astronomical spending wasn't all that it was cracked up to be. Let's kick it off. In the late 1990s, Real Madrid was a club of contrasting fortunes. They were celebrating big wins, including major trophies, but also grappling with financial troubles. And along comes Florentino Perez. Armed with a plan to address these financial woes and boost the team's prowess, he aimed to become the president of Real Madrid. His bold campaign promise to bring Luis Figo from Barcelona to Real Madrid caused a frenzy among fans and the media, highlighting his ambitious vision for the club. Perez made this his rallying cry throughout his presidential campaign. He promised that if he won the election, he would bring Figo to Real Madrid, or else he would pay for the Real Madrid members' tickets for the entire season. This bold claim was part of a meticulously crafted contract with Figo, which stipulated a 1.6 million euro payment to Figo if Perez did not win. However, if Perez won and Figo chose to stay at Barcelona, Figo would have to pay 19 million euros in compensation. When Perez was elected president, his first major act was selling Real Madrid's training ground. This crucial decision not only cleared the club's debts, but also funded the construction of a more economical training facility and enabled the signing of top-tier players. Keeping true to his word, Perez's initial landmark signing was Luis Figo, acquired for a then record fee of 62 million euros. This move sent the tone for Perez's presidency, characterized by his strategy of bringing in a Galactico, a world-class player each year, as exemplified by future acquisitions. Luis Figo's transfer from Barcelona to Real Madrid in 2000 was not only notable for its staggering 30 million euro fee, but also for its profound impact on the perception of player loyalty in football. Figo, reflecting on this move, acknowledged its complexities and the personal challenges it brought. At the peak of his career, Figo was a cornerstone of Barcelona's success, playing a significant role in their two La Liga triumphs since joining in 1995. His switch to arch-rivals Real Madrid was a major event and a seismic shift in the football landscape, perceived as a betrayal by Barcelona fans. It peaked when Figo faced a hostile reception at Camp Nou, marked by the notorious incident where a pig's head was thrown onto the pitch. In an interview, Figo spoke about his transfer from Barcelona to Real Madrid as a challenge and a validation of his worth. He said, if it hadn't been Madrid, maybe I wouldn't have gone. It's a decision based on feeling value. He believed in Real Madrid's project and his significant role there, marking the start of the Galactico era. Figo also discussed the personal cost, how it affected his relationships and understanding of friendship, noting, maybe it was good because I thought they were friends and they weren't. The person who decides if I'm going or not is me. He acknowledged the risks of his move, but was thankful it worked out, recognizing its historical impact in football. Building Real Madrid's team of Galacticos wasn't just about famous players. It also meant using existing players, such as Raul and Claude Makelele. Raul rose up from Real Madrid's youth system and was already important in the team's attack. He was known for his leadership and ability to score goals. Claude Makelele, while not as famous, was very important in keeping the midfield balanced. He was exceptional at retrieving the ball and quickly passing to attacking players. His role was crucial, even if it wasn't as glamorous as the others. Both players and experts often exclaimed, Makelele was the glue that made the team work. The team's win in the Spanish League in 2001 showed how well this mix of famous players and creative tactics worked. The Galacticos were known for their exciting attacking play, but it was the work of players like Raul and Makalele that really made the team successful. This showed that a good football team needs not just famous players, but also balance and teamwork. In 2001, Zinedine Zidane joined Real Madrid. This was a big moment for the club and President Perez. Perez wanted a team with both famous Galacticos and homegrown talent. Zidane was already famous for his skill in football. He had plied his trade in France and Italy before transferring to Madrid for a record 77.5 million euros. This showed how ambitious Perez and Real Madrid were. 
at Real Madrid, Zidane performed well, but injuries began to affect his playing time and his effectiveness. But he still added a new dimension to the team's style. However, the team was unable to capture La Liga, as was expected of them. Real Madrid experienced significant success in the Champions League, with Zinedine Zidane playing a crucial role particularly in the knockout stages. His most iconic moment came in the 2002 final against Bayer Leverkusen, where he scored a remarkable goal. This goal occurred in the 44th minute of the match, when Zidane, with exceptional skill and precision, executed a brilliant volley that ultimately proved decisive in securing Real Madrid's victory. The match, held at Hamden Park in Glasgow, ended with a score of 2-1 in favor of Real Madrid, with Zidane's goal being a key factor in their triumph. This victory was part of Real Madrid's larger narrative of success during this period, with Zidane's contributions being a highlight of their Champions League campaigns. Real Madrid's 2002 acquisition of Brazilian star Ronaldo significantly changed the team's dynamics, adding a new attacking dimension. This move exemplified the club's focus on star power and flamboyant play. Ronaldo Nazario marked a transformative period in the club's history, introducing a dynamic, new attacking element to the team. Ronaldo's arrival was a testament to Real Madrid's commitment to integrating world-class talent and enhancing their already vibrant style of play. His inclusion in the team not only changed their playing style, but also raised the bar for expectations and performance. Ronaldo Nazario is celebrated for his exceptional skills and tactical acumen on the field. Esteemed figures in football have praised his remarkable abilities and influential impact on the game. His agility, speed, and knack for scoring were pivotal in elevating the team's performance. Under the management of Vicente del Bosque at Real Madrid, Ronaldo was a key player known for his extraordinary goal-scoring ability. His presence on the field was seen as a significant advantage, often putting opponents on the back foot. Teammates and football legends alike have acknowledged his exceptional talent and contribution to the sport. Football greats have often expressed admiration for Ronaldo's unique abilities. His combination of speed, power, and technical skill was unparalleled, making him a formidable player and a nightmare for defenders. His achievements on the field, including multiple FIFA World Player of the Year awards and a pivotal role in Brazil's World Cup victory in 2002, underscore his status as one of football's all-time greats. After winning La Liga in 2003, Perez set out to find his next star. He settled on David Beckham. His arrival was more than just a sports move. It was a seismic shift in football's landscape. The signing, however, was controversial because the team needed to add defenders, yet they got another superstar forward, and one who played the same position as another star on the team as well. Back in the day, from 2000 to 2006, Real Madrid's world was rocked by some big, bold moves under Florentino Perez. This guy, Perez, had a grand plan. Every summer, he'd bring in a mega football star. It started with Luis Figo, then David Beckham joined the party in 2003. At first, things looked great. Madrid won La Liga twice and even snagged the UEFA Champions League in 2002. But there was a catch. They were all about attack and kind of forgot about defense. Things took a turn when some crucial defenders left. And then, bam! Coach Vicente del Bosque, the man who kept the team glued together, was shown the door. Perez kept splashing cash on attackers like Beckham even when the team started to wobble. Then Beckham left, and that was the end of an era. Figo had already moved on, Zidane hung up his boots, and Ronaldo was fed up and not at his best. The team's mojo took a hit, no trophies and lots of frowns, ending with Perez stepping down in 2006. Those years were also full of coaching drama. Carlos Queiroz tried to steer this ship of stars with Jose Pizarro by his side. Imagine the pressure of managing all these big names, expected to win in style. Initially, with the likes of Ronaldo, Zidane, Figo and Beckham, things looked promising, but it didn't last, and Queiroz left after just a year. This period at Real Madrid was like a high-stakes experiment. The club aimed for football greatness while also chasing huge profits. They brought in superstars, creating a team that glittered with fame. Yet this focus on star power and financial gains raised questions. Was the emphasis more on making money than on strategic quality football? 
Despite the big names and the money spent, the team's balance tilted. They lost key defensive players, opting for attackers instead. This strategy led to impressive accomplishments, but also to a sense that they didn't quite reach their full potential on the field. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Do you think the Galactico strategy helped Real Madrid become more famous and rich? Or did it stop them from winning more in football? Don't forget to smash that subscribe button, hit the like button, and ring the notification bell. Until next time, keep your love for the game alive and see ya on the pitch.